and and I should say that it was ironic that at the same in the same <laughs> week here I am straying around doing looking at other people's arborvitaes. Um, we were taking pictures for today's webinar, looking for problems that were today in the landscape. And uh, Steve was taking a picture of this uh, bleeding heart because there's some chlorotic foliage on it. But that's not what I was looking at. I was looking at Enchanter's Nightshade. Uh, I hate that plant. I hate those little burrs that stick on you. So I started, I, I it, not in my work clothes, not prepared to be outside, not even with gloves on. I, I got down on my knees and started pulling nightshade and then saw it also in the shared border with the neighbor in an area that's never mm -hmm. been tended. There's a bunch of it there. So I started pulling nightshade until Steve said, come on, would you, let's move on. And now I got chiggers, uh, bites all yeah. over my legs. And so does Steve. Yeah. Um, Mine reacted different. Yeah. Hers got big and blotchy. Mine are little tiny said, red isn't that, dots. Isn't that wonderful? I, 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 I escaped the poison ivy that we worked in all last weekend at the niece's house. Um, and I, I covered up properly, used my gloves, cleaned things up. I kept Stephen, who's very sensitive to poison ivy out of it, didn't get poison ivy and got chiggers, which might have been this little guy. Very. Much, I'm trying to figure this his size, but an adult chigger, which doesn't bite, it's the immature chiggers that bite. An adult chigger is um, something like a third to a quarter of a millimeter in size. So can't even blow them up very well yeah. to show you, but that might be what it was. I prefer the these kinds of bugs that are. They come and visit us while we're working in the yeah. garden. Yeah, so be prepared when you go out in the garden. When I go out, I'm wearing DEET on my ankles, on my arms. I'm wearing a hat <laughs> soaked in DEET. I, I have my heavy work pants on and my boots on. I wear nylon pants because insects can't bite through nylon as easy as they can through so well, make sure they've got elastic at the at the bottom so because, you can cup it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But what we're, we were really doing as we walked around looking for problems is taking names. What looks good, even yep. though we didn't do much to it. And I know that there are some parts of the uh, area that, that, that you live in. Um, we've talked to people all over the, um, from Massachusetts and Vermont over to Minnesota um, and some places that it has been a terrible growing year, but it's been a good growing year for us Yes, and a good year to look and say, look at that cup plant. Look at the green, the deep green on the Dark leaves. Dark green, great amount of bloom, yeah. pollinators yeah. standing up straight. Yeah. The, uh, the orange flowers in there are the galardia. They're clean as can be. This is the time of year to take names and keep the ones that look good and get rid of the other ones. Look at the seven sun shrub. It's got, the foliage is so such, clean. Yeah, so it's for Scythia, clean but, foliage. It's just, yeah. it, it is a plant that that makes it worthwhile to be there. This is a green giant arborvitae. And I, look, even as close as I can look, I can't find any problems to show you on this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wygelia. Wygelia was looking good. Sometimes they get pretty, uh, if he uh, well, if, if the aphids move in, maybe yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's get the rest of those questions, or, or at least some of those questions, out of the way before we move on to diagnosing problems. We'll diagnose what problems people have gotten their questions so far. And indeed, a lot of them are problem questions because it is uh, it is that time of year. Um, okay, so I'll just go chronological from when we first started uh, the meeting early on. RK is saying, I just found several tall flocks with what appears to be aster yellows. After removing the diseased plants, do I need to wait before planting a more non-susceptible type of plant? I didn't think it was a soil borne issue, but... Aster yellows is a, is a, uh, a uh, we'll call it viral. I think it's one of those mycoplasma. Anyway, it, it is a systemic problem. It's in the whole plant. And yes, if you have aster yellows, you take it out with it. If you have aster yellows, you will generally have yellowing foliage and then stems dying back. Um, but you will also find that the crown is affected. Um, you might have flocks that yellows and dies back that had mildew, especially if it's a crowded flox. In that case, the crown will still be dry and good. So if, if the crown is dry and good, you just need to thin the flocks out more. We've got some pictures we can show you a little bit later. I won't zap to those right now because it's um, we put our zap point a little bit later. Um, so, so if it's aster yellows, yes, get rid of the plant, but make sure it's aster yellows because you might be sacrificing something you don't have to sacrifice if it is just flocks and mildew. 
and if it is Astra Yellow's um, uh, archaea can plant again next year, right? That yes, there's yes, nothing yes. that's going to linger. Yes, you can plant again. Great. Um, so Lori is asking, what could uh, be possible causes of shrinking hostas? I have some planted under cedars and maples within inches, and some are stunted while others are larger. Can hostas be planted in pots and left that way to address this issue? Also, what does cutting back hosta flowers do to the plant? You can, you can definitely plant hostas in pots and keep them in pots for ages. Putting them in a pot and leaving them above ground in the winter might affect some of them. There are a lot of different species of hosta. Might affect some of them in that you see some, uh, you'll see some losses because above ground in a pot, they're not insulated as well as in the ground. But they certainly can put in the, be put in pots. You put them in plastic pots or fiberglass pots even better, and uh, they're called resin. You can set them on the ground and they've got a really good chance. They might be getting smaller because there's competition from the trees, especially if it's a maple tree, something with fine, uh, fine feeder roots that will fill every available space. They can compete very heavily with hostas. If the hostas are dying back during the growing season, then you need to take a look online for hosta blight and hosta uh, uh, virus and late blight. We've got a picture of late blight a little bit later. But if they're dying back during the year, and that's what's making them smaller, you may have a problem that you're going to need to dig some hostas out and leave that soil fallow for a little bit before you put another hosta back in there. But you're going to need to compare what yours look like now if they're dying back during the year to what you see online with some of the hosta diseases. Okay. Um, Teresa has also noted in the chat that the deer and the rabbits do a great job of shrinking the hostas at her house. <laughs> yeah, they do. Usually during the year, you can tell because the hostas get these strange leaves that are just sticks. <laughs> straight up six. Um, and uh, uh, Laura was also asking about um, the cutting back the hosta flowers. Is that going to oh, do back. anything? It doesn't, um, taking the flowers off of a perennial plant does not damage the plant. No. Um, it doesn't even, as far as we can tell, frustrate the plant. Um, but see, some of them might bloom a little bit again. Yes. Yeah. Some might, some might thwart your efforts by bloom, but a lot of hosta growers take all the flowers oh, off yeah. all the time. Steve took one deadheaded one hosta this week because it was uh, in the way of our seeing. I the birds deadheaded at the, the pond. wrong one first. It was still starting to move. Oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I didn't look close. Right. Yeah. 